size of the Louboutin event. Ali and I are hanging out here with this duck. <laughs> Did you say you just like color? Yeah, I love neon. I do. I Shook it. I am not mature enough. Look how comfortable these look. They do look really comfortable. We have it in Pensa in the wild. Spotted <coughs> in her natural habitat. Do not anger the influencer. <laughs> Do you think these shoes are gonna blow up? You know? You think might. All you need is a little bit of pressure and some hard breath. And you might just get there. Thank you. 
Then I'm out of here. Well, then you know three more. Why? Tonight, Monday. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Two more sleeps, because that's what I tell my kids. That's how they know. Two more sleeps until we are out of here. So today, I took the day off, but by that I mean that we have to shoot stuff. And then we're gonna do some furniture shopping. Yay! And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna pack as much as I can. I have a dinner tonight at eight, and then tomorrow we have shows. And that's it. That is a wrap. I cannot wait to go home. I've been gone for three weeks. I cannot wait to see my kids, but hang out. Hang out with us. <laughs> okay, when are we ready? Ah. All right, 
that's a wrap on today's shoot. The rest is tomorrow. Thanks. Do you have anything else to say to the people? People, we are going shopping. <laughs> we need to check our credit card statement first to see how much we can really spend. I love working like that. Spender. because Stella McCartney ran overtime this morning and they needed the models to get to this show. So Bella Hadid and like a few other people, I don't know how they get the, they do the hair and makeup that quick, but like, it's crazy. So the show is 45 minutes late, but it was probably one of my favorites. Very awesome tailoring and the way it was designed, the cuts, the cuts of the clothes were amazing. Oh my God, this elevator's frozen. frozen. In here. Literally, this elevator is absolutely frozen. It feels like a refrigerator in here. Your face, wow. Yesterday it was grass. Today it's frozen. Yeah, yesterday when we got in the elevator, it literally smelled like freshly cut grass. <laughs> I, we, I cannot explain it. What is so this? A seasonal elevator? I mean, yesterday was spring, today's yeah. winter. I was just like, the, the elevator was open. We were like, why does it smell like grass? <laughs> Good morning. I feel crazy. They were having a party next door in the hotel at three o'clock in the morning. When I tell you it sounded like the party was in my room, I was so confused. I was like, what is happening? Of course my battery is going dead. Anyway, I am packing. If I can find another battery, I will pop one in. If not, We're back. We are so back. Fashion month is officially over. I am home and I am happy to be here. So happy to be here. Let me take off my glasses. I was trying these on earlier and I fell in love with them. But let's catch up with the Q&A because there's so much going on. I have big, big news. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know the news, but we will save that until the end. Let's wrap up fashion month because whoa, it was intense and there were a lot of episodes and I know I'm dragging this out and you are done with me here until next season, of course, which is February. May is in the office and she's going to help me with some questions. Let's let's chat. May, how, how are we feeling here? What, what questions do we have for May? We'll start with overall, what was this season like for you? 
Okay, the season. The season was very long. To be honest with you, it is so long, I can't even remember it. It was Fast and the Furious, okay? So let's start from the very beginning. I left around September 14th, which was very early. I left right after the Michael Kors show in New York. Usually I have a week in between because everybody goes to London for Fashion Month. I did not go and also sadly the Queen passed away so London was completely canceled. Um, so I like had to run home, pack my clothes and the reason I left so early is because I had a campaign with Laurel Piana which was super exciting, a very um, amazing prestigious brand. I was like very honored for them to ask me to do this campaign so they flew me out to Paris and I spent a few days in Paris. I had three days in between that I could have came back to New York, repacked for Fashion Week, and then went back and then go to Milan. And I just felt like, it's three days. This, the flights were expensive. Like, I, just let me stay out there. So I spent three extra days in Paris before going to Milan. Milan was great. It was short, it was sweet. I happen to really love Milan because it is not drawn out. It is like, go 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 season like every show is back to back it is like filled with stress you're getting your hair done you're exhausted you're not eating and then before you know it, it is done it is over and you're like wow did i enjoy that like what happened here you don't even know like what hit you you have so much content you just go there and i think because i thrive in chaos i feel like i thrive in milan and it is one of my favorites and Italians are just so welcoming, you know? The food is fantastic, Italians are amazing. Okay, after Milan, we went back to Paris. I stayed at two different hotels because I was working with an amazing company there and they put me in a beautiful hotel the first, the first few days that I was there. I was very fortunate to have, you know, a few jobs that kind of helped pay with all these expenses because Fashion Month is a huge, huge expense. So as you further your career, obviously you're hoping not to spend as much and to collaborate and team up with other brands to kind of offset those expenses they pay for, you know, et cetera. And um, I'm kind of past the stage of breaking even, thank God or like losing, like losing was the worst. Well, actually, I prefer to break even versus losing. Anyway, that's another time. So let's see, after that, it was Dior Day. Dior Day is like my absolute favorite. I love the Dior team. I'm super loyal to them. They've always been very good to me and I will always be a shopper there. Um, their team is phenomenal. They do a fantastic job. Oddly enough, they have a very small team. I remember when I first started working with them, I thought they had this huge team, but their team is very small and they work hard. Their work ethic is phenomenal. And um, some of the girls there are my friends now and I just, I admire and love them so much. So Dior, I'm always Dior girl here. So that was an amazing show. Okay, wait, sorry, hold on. I have, I have to take a call. <laughs> Let's see what else happened in Paris. Paris is long, guys. Paris is like 10 days. It just is so drawn out. And every year I say I'm not going to do all of Paris just because I don't do as many shows in Paris as I do in Milan. And by the time you get to Paris, you're exhausted. Um, but I feel like I had a good season. I shot a lot of content. The team was great. And I do like to create content for YouTube and for you to watch. So I think that's always an incentive for me to stay a little bit longer. But considering my schedule is starting to get a little bit more hectic, my priorities and stuff might change for next season. So we might not be able to stay as long, but we will see. May, next question. Next question is, what was your favorite show? What kind of question is this? My question? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, what was my favorite show? I really loved. Hmm. I love Max Mara. I always love Max Mara. I always think that they have a really good, solid show. Like they're just, they always have a beautiful show. Sakai in Paris was a like amazing. I think that they did a really good job with like out of the box thinking on the cut, the blazers. I think they have a lot of like bell bottom pieces and I'm kind of hoping that doesn't come back. I don't want to wear bell bottoms. <laughs> I want to stay away from bell bottoms, but um, 
I love their show. I thought their show was really cool. Dior was also awesome because it was like, a lot of people did a lot of the bodice, like they're bringing back the Marie Antoinette days, which I think is a very nice. I don't know how wearable it is, but obviously fast fashion is gonna turn it into something. If somebody asked me to wear this bodice piece, you know I am, I'm going to. There's also a show that doesn't get as much attention and it was the Christian Engines. I love that show with the latex socks. It stuck to me, it stuck in my head. Like I would wear every last piece that came down the runway. It was very wearable. You know, a lot of runway pieces that you see are not very wearable, but you take inspo from, you know, whatever the piece might be. There was so many shows though, I can't keep track. But that was a good question, man. Earlier in Milan Fashion Week part one, you mentioned having anxiety and brought up how Fashion Week and your job can be very competitive at times. Could you elaborate? Yes. I did see that there were some questions and you guys wanted me to elaborate about the anxiety, the pressure, the um, competitiveness of fashion month, fashion creators, etc. <sighs> okay, well, there's definitely a lot of competitiveness that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see. This job is very competitive in the sense that it is a very small circle. Like it's there's competitiveness in every job, right? So this job is no different. However, we are a lot smaller and you're all kind of competing with one another to get that seat or that spot during fashion month. And during fashion month, it is kind of like US team gets certain amount of seats and then the global girls get certain amount of seats. So you're kind of like, I'm from the US market, you know, will I get that seat? If you don't get a show, for example, you're kind of like, does the brand even like me? Do they like my content? You start kind of like questioning yourself. You're like, am I good enough? Are my numbers good enough? Like, it's just, a, it's a complete mind thing. Like, and you're going up against so many other people that you start questioning everything. And I'm the most confident person. I try my best not to let it get to me. But I think by the end, you feel so beat up and abused. You're basically feeling like crap about yourself when you, by the time you come back, you feel out of shape because you're not eating well. Um, you feel emotionally and mentally just drained and depleted. Um, there's just so, mentally, you have to be very strong-willed or you will come back home just feeling like complete garbage about yourself and I also got out of this state where I stopped comparing myself to others because the minute that you start to compare yourself you start to doubt yourself and I don't have time for doubt so I stay in my own lane I think social media has a lot to that that comes into play where you're kind of seeing other people at events and doing different things and you're like but wait I didn't get invited or hey I work with this brand but did they forget about me so I kind of tend to stay away from those things, but sometimes you can't help it. So I actually just don't look at anybody's stories. <laughs> I don't look at anybody's stories or follow anybody during Fashion Month because it's my time to grind. And I'm like, girl, stay in your lane, do your own thing, create your own path. And like, when it's over, it's over. Then I'll come back to looking at everybody's stories so I don't have time to compare myself. And the minute that you're slipping, like I know some of you are like, do you sleep? You know, you could take a break. No, I'm not gonna take a break. No, I'm not gonna sleep. Because the, the minute that you're sleeping on your job, the next pretty young thing is coming to take your crown. So let me continue to work on my crown and get higher and higher because this is what I'm here to do. Like I am focused. So long as I'm not having a mental breakdown, and I am fine. I am completely fine. What's your question, sir? Are we gonna see your husband's face on Roni? <laughs> Wait, we didn't even get there yet. Well, now that my husband has a question, I guess I'll segue out of that going into the news. Surprise! I am taking this show on the road and I am going to television. I will be the new kid on the block on Real Housewives of New York on Bravo! I will be playing the character of myself. Are we so excited? 
don't freak out don't get worried your girl is not gonna stop youtube i have not stopped yet um there was some speculation when i took a break in the summer and there was a leak about who was going to be on the show i had to stay super hush hush about it because i just was not allowed to talk about it at that time but now that the announcement is out i can talk about it a little bit i still cannot tell you too much like about the show but i'm sure there's going to be leaks and all that jazz and things like that uh, but the show will not be airing until 2023 so you have tons of time with me i'm not going to change i'm still going to be the same person i am i think at the end of the day especially when i had this conversation on instagram people were really freaked out aren't you worried don't you have anxiety this is going to do this and that to your family what about the drama and it felt like everyone was putting their own issues on me and that's not how I feel. I also opened up about how sometimes in life we get opportunities that might scare us and immediately we think all the worst things that can happen. And I'm not like that. Instead, I'm only thinking about all the positive things that can happen because I truly believe your thoughts become things. So if I'm only thinking about positivity, then this I'm sure can very much so open doors for um, growing in my career and other things in my life. Who knows? Like sky's the limit. And I think that is how I'm looking at this opportunity that was brought to me. And I think it's great. I think it's great that I'm going on TV. I mean, don't we all think I have a personality for it? I'm going to talk your head off here. I'm going to talk your head off on television. It is great. Will we see my husband on TV? Let's hope not. Okay. We don't want to see him. He's got nothing to give. Maybe he has something to give. I can't answer that question either, but you know, um, let's just be positive about it. It's gonna be, it's going to be great. If you are leaving comments on Bravo and all that other places, I'm not reading them. I, I'm not here to read everybody else's comments. I'm sticking to my own platforms. Scout fam, I'll read your comments. Instagram, TikTok, reading all those comments. Negativity will get deleted and blocked. I don't have time for it because we spew positivity here. Anyone who has anything to say that I'm being naive or I'm being this is not your life. It is mine. Let me live my life and this is the opportunity that I have chose for me. And if I decide like at the end of the day it's not for me, then it, I won't do it anymore. And it's just that simple. Let's stop being afraid of taking opportunities that can further you in life. So with that said, I'm closing out Fashion Month completely. We can get into more Roni stuff in another week, but thank you so much for hanging out with me for another season of Fashion Month. If you are new here, please, please subscribe. I promise I am a vibe and I'll see you guys next week. Deuces!